I'm a transplant. I've been here since 2005. My wife is from here. Mm -hmm. Have a baby here. Typically you know. happens, right? With transplants. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, it, and it's funny because people either get on board mm -hmm. with New Orleans or they have to go. Yeah. Because you cannot change. <laughs> right. New Orleans. Yeah. You can't change the, the culture. You can't change the people. Yeah, you either got to accept it or not. Yeah, you're either yeah you're either in or not. It was it was crazy. Yeah, I just became. I was here about six months before the storm. Mm -hmm. Then the storm hit, and then um, I stayed to like help clean up. And I think that okay. at that point, when you're like involved in yeah. the cleanup and the involved in, in like the putting everything back together, right, right. you're like, oh, okay, well, now I feel like a part of the city. Yeah. I think that that really is what. Like, it, yeah, it kind of made you part of the community. Yeah, it cemented. You weren't really cemented. an outsider at that point. Totally. Hey, I'm Armando Leduc, producer, film actor, and owner of Leduc Entertainment. I have chosen a life off the beaten path and wanted to find others that are doing the same. Spaghetti on the Wall is a show based on all of the years that I've thrown spaghetti on the wall and nurtured what's stuck. We will share fun stories, ideas, tips, tricks, and more. Welcome to Spaghetti on the Wall. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on when you are consuming this podcast, ladies and gentlemen. And we're back with another one, Lloyd Bourgeois in the house. What's up, man? Hey, man. Doing great. I'm glad you are here. We're talking about talking about the legal field, talking about disability, talking about you know personal injury. Mm -hmm. um, why? Why you do that? Why are you in it? Why are you doing it? Oh, man. Um 2008 ish I was doing uh like insurance defense and some property damage claims after Hurricane Katrina mm -hmm. I think most attorneys around the New Orleans area that was their life at that point um, I got a call from a family member uh, the only attorney in the family uh, really probably the only person at that time who kind of gone to college uh, and they're like hey your cousin Pam, she got kicked off a disability, and they don't know why. They need your help. I was like, I have no idea what's disability, you know. And like, well, you're the only person we know who and can you were help an us. At the time. Yeah, I was an attorney. Yeah, we were like three years out, four years out. Um, and I'm like, we figure it out. <laughs> so it's kind of what I did, and. uh Jumped in and really, so Pam was, I'd known her my whole life and I'd be sitting down having a conversation with her and she'd be like, hey, what's your name again? And her company, her disability company was like, oh yeah, she can, she can sell insurance. That's what she did. She was insurance sales, health insurance sales, big companies. And I'm like, she doesn't even know me. I've known her my whole life. She's asking me my name and she's telling me she can work. Right. She can sell insurance. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I literally had to just jump in and kind of figure out what we had to do to get her back on disability insurance benefits because she had paid for it. Our company paid for it and they were trying to take it away. And that's really what her family was using to survive. I mean, she had a young daughter at this point. Um, she was battling brain cancer. That was her disability. Um, she had been through some treatments, brain surgeries. Um, so ultimately, we kind of got her back on and it just kind of opened my eyes to, man, there's a lot of people out there who kind of need help. Because I just started writing about it. Um, it's funny. I, I started a WordPress blog way back in like 2008, 2009. And it was like disabilitybenefits.wordpress.com. Yeah. <laughs> and, and like I started writing, just kind of conceptualizing what I knew, kind of trying to help me learn it. And people just started finding it. And I'm like, hey. Uh, I have this problem, and I have this problem, and I have this problem. Can you help me? Can you help me? And it just kind of blossomed from there. Um, would this be considered work injury? No, it wouldn't be a work injury. Um, like, she didn't get hurt at work. For her, I mean, she, it was just a medical condition that came up in life. You know, just diagnosed with cancer at some point. And then, um, but through your work, uh, like when you work for bigger companies a lot of times, or even smaller companies, you know, they provide health insurance and disability insurance, two big ones or 401k. Um, so it's like an employee benefit type of coverage. And so even though you may not have been hurt at work, it just covers you if you can't work. And so it's like, it's constant battle between these like insurance companies not wanting to pay, right? And they're always like trying to come up with excuses as to why they don't want to come out of pocket, right? 
And so then you guys, you have to come in and be like, this is the reason why. Yeah. For, for that, for that type of case. Yes. It's, um, it, it gets a little complicated cause they're, the law is weird on it. Um, it's not just like going in court and proving, you know, putting your client on the stand and saying, Hey jury, listen to my client, listen to the insurance company's, uh, reason why they're not paying her and you decide, um, it, it's really not like that in these cases. It's you got to get all your medical evidence in. You, the insurance company reviews it all, and then they make a decision. And then when it goes to court, basically a judge just reviews all the paperwork. They never, you never get in front of a jury or in front of a judge. So they're just reviewing what was presented to the insurance company. And so you really have to kind of build your case before you even start getting to court. Um, and proving to the insurance company why this person, this patient is disabled. Because if um, many times they'll just say, well, we, we have our own doctors who say, oh, yeah, we, we understand they have that diagnosis, but we still think they can sell insurance. We still think they can Do drive, we, yeah. drive a truck, you know, be an accountant. And that's where you come in. Yeah. Cool. So you got a family here. Uh, Louisiana. Are you born, born and raised? Yeah. Born, born and raised here in the new Orleans area. Uh, kind of grew up, came of age and on the bayou, bayou gosh. Uh, did you not want to, did you ever, people here, they stay here. Yeah. Like that's, that's, it's, it's always interesting. Cause like, you know, mm-hmm. you go to other, well, I say bigger cities cause new Orleans doesn't feel it's a big city, but it's a small, small town. City. Yeah. It's a small town. But like, People in other places, like, they don't necessarily stay there. But, mm-hmm. like, New Orleans people, they, yeah. they're born here and then they stay here. Why do you think that is? Uh, you know, I've, I've thought about that a lot just because I've stayed here. Yeah. Uh, we've had opportunity. I actually have an engineering degree um, from LSU. My wife has an engineering degree. So we've had opportunity to leave. But, you know, uh, I think family is very important to folks here and I'm not saying it's not important other places but I think um, it when you don't have a lot of opportunity early in life like family becomes so much more important because you don't see other people kind of leaving and so those opportunities they're there but just everyone you've ever been around your whole life has stayed around and so you know you kind of following the example of others. Um, and then you see people who leave and they come back and they're like, oh. and they do come back. It's and they're crazy. like, oh, yeah, that is- you know, it's just, it's so different. These other places, you know? Yeah. And so you hear that and you're like, well, wh- why do I want to leave? You know, we can, we can make a go here. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a transplant. I've been here since 2005. My wife is from here. Mm-hmm. Have a baby here. Typically you know. happens, right? With transplants. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, it, and it's funny because people either, get on board Mm -hmm. with New Orleans or they have to go. Yeah. Because you cannot change (laughs) New Orleans. You can't change the the culture. You can't change the people. Yeah, you either got to accept it or not. (laughs) Yeah, you're either either in or not. It was was crazy. Yeah, I just became... I was here about six months before the storm. Mm -hmm. Then the storm hit. And then um, I stayed to, like, help clean up. And I think that at that point, when you're, like, involved in the cleanup and the involved in, in, like, the putting everything back together right, right. you're like oh okay well now i feel like a part of the city yeah. i think that that really is what like it, yeah it kind of made you part of the community yeah it cemented wasn't really cemented an outsider at that point totally and uh you know i became a man in the city for sure i moved here not knowing anybody mm-hmm. um and i come from a military background so my my dad came you know my mother came my okay. dad came my sister you yeah, know, yeah. my niece and so like my immediate family mm-hmm. all moved here you know kind of followed and right and they work here now and you know it's <laughs> a you know it's a thing so yeah it's i always wonder you know what what is that like why do people stay you know look new orleans is a great town yeah you know but i always wonder what that thought process yeah, but, it, but it has its warts that we all oh, see every yeah. day and we all complain about and yet we all stay right yeah, <laughs> yeah. like the insurance is going up because yeah. of, you know because of hurricanes and it's like all right well whatever yeah you know, insurance and party so let me ask you um besides being an attorney what other things are you know what other things drive you like what other things are you involved in oh uh, what am i involved in well kind of i think going back to like why do you stay here i mean i just like 
being part of the community. Um, so I'm on the board of United Way over in St. Charles Parish. Um, it's fun to, to be a part of that and see the impact that the community, that, you know, others in the community can have. Um, so we do events and, uh, we like doing, there's a big cook off they do every October that we put our team in and participate. And it's always fun to kind of do that. Um, so I like doing that for, I'm kind of getting out of just coaching, like coaching my kids in sports. Uh, I kind of took, a, a were you voluntold? No, man, I loved it. So like yeah. my father was not really involved in my life, um, growing up. And so one of the commitments I always made to myself was like, Hey man, I have kids. They're going to be involved, um, and be a part of it, whether it's being there or doing, um, you know, you're going to go to the events, the PTO meetings, the parent teacher conferences, and you're going to coach, um, because I love sports. Uh, I think there's a lot of value in sports and, um, so when my kids got to be old enough to play sports. There's never uh, an, a, a glut of volunteers for <laughs> youth coaching positions. So they're always begging, like, you know, we need more coaches, we need more coaches. But I was always, you know, signing up to coach. So I coached my oldest son um, starting, you know, four years old, soccer all the way through. He got to high school, played uh, high school sports. So when he got to high school and I was – some at some points coaching him and my younger son. Um, I coached my daughter a little bit when she played soccer, but then she moved to dancing and my wife mm-hmm. was like, my wife's like, no, you, you can't, can't, te- coach dance. Can't, you can't teach dancing. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, uh, so I did that. Uh, but now I really just, um, my younger son's still involved in uh, competitive soccer. Uh, he plays for a school soccer and baseball and my daughter does competitive dancing. So we, are constantly each weekend, you know, part of being committed to your kids and being there is showing up and being there. Yeah. Um, and so that does take a lot of my time. So I do that and stuff around our community, you know. That's great. How are you staying sort of ahead of industry trends, you know, with your business? How are you, you know, kind of kind of doing that stuff? Yeah, man. Listening to spaghetti on the wall. <laughs> that's right. You know, that's... I mean, I think you have to do those things, right? Um, not everything you hear may work for you. Uh, not everything you hear may uh, be applicable to you, but it's part of learning and listening to what else is going on, what else is out there. So listening to great podcasts like yours and other folks, uh, continuing to read books, being exposed to stuff, kind of participating in mastermind groups, learning from others. Um, that's how we try to stay abreast of what's going on. Um, you know, in the internet world, everything moves so quickly. Yeah, um, it does. Sometimes they tell you it's changing. Most of the times they don't. You just kind of see, you see the traffic numbers and try to, you know, reverse engineer what's going on. And yeah. sometimes you figure it out. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you listen to podcasts and they figured it out. Then you. Yeah. Yeah. Let me do that. Yeah. Are you an early, would you say you're an early adopter yeah. on some things? I would, I would say so. Yes. That's good. So we've. Like I, was, like I was saying earlier, man, I did a WordPress blog right when WordPress came out. You couldn't even do a private WordPress. They, they didn't even have like the WordPress theme where you can have your own website built on that platform. It was just through WordPress. So we I started blogging then. Um, how how uh, often did you do the blog? Then uh, probably weekly, um, you know, for a few months and then it kind of ebbed and flowed a bit, you know, because it's just at that point, that was a one man show. So when you don't have a lot of new clients, you have a lot more time to blog and then you get more clients and then you're like, don't have the time. So you kind of hit that ebb and flow of uh, writing for your blog and to, to reach more folks to actually working. So you were in content marketing before content marketing was a thing. Yeah. I would say so. How beneficial was it for you? It's still to this day probably the biggest factor of how we get found and get cases. Really? Yeah. Talk about that a little bit. I mean, so we, we've, over the years, and now we're talking 10, 
12 years kind of built up of a library of stuff. And we, it's not just static, you know, we kind of go back and fix it up. You add graphics, you make videos out of some of them. Um, but the information is still there, but, you know, constantly putting it out there, um, being generous with your knowledge to help educate others who are going through a situation. And, you know, folks sometimes find calling lawyers scary. And so to be able to just get on a website and read through stuff um, and figure it out somewhat on their own helps them. And then if they really do run into a problem that they can't solve, they're like, well, this guy has provided us so much already. Yeah. Um, so and we and we do I have like two books, uh, one for nice. dis- one for like Social Security disability. And so folks, you know, what's it called? Uh, nine mistakes. We call it the nine mistake books. It's like nine mistakes you, uh, you make on your social security disability claim. Um, so they can request it on our website and we just mail it throughout the country. Um, nice. And we have a lo- like a personal injury book um, locally. People have been in a crash. They request that we send it. No obligation. You know, it's no hard sell or anything. It's just we want them to have the information. Sure. And then. To me, that's what content marketing is, right? Being generous with what you know. Um, Dude, it's it's crazy. I was having a I was having a, t- a call with one of my uh, one of my sales guys, and I was like, it <laughs> it's controversial. It's controversial. It's controversial, right? I I liken it to dating, mm-hmm. right? Because like at the end of the day, with with your dating with with the date. At some point, you're going to do the deed, right? The deed is is what we're all, right, that's right. the goal, right? Yeah. The deed in business is the the the, the money exchange, right? right? Like, sale. okay, I'm going to, yeah, the sale, right? People already know that you want their money. Yeah. Like that is, they, you don't need to tell them that you want their money. They right. know. If you're mm-hmm. in contact, they already know, right? Yeah. So how can we provide value. But like when I say provide value, not just some like thing that you find on the internet and then you're just like, here you go. That's, that's not value, right? right? That's not valuable. Mm -hmm. Valuable is I've taken my time away from things that my family, my friends, like things that I could be doing to have fun. Right. 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 And I've, and I've devoted just like you did time to sit down and write, Mm -hmm. right. (laughs) <laughs> Sit down and write, right? <laughs> Type it out. My, you know, my knowledge for you, that is the value, yeah. right? And I feel like when, when, when attorneys, mm-hmm. right? And, and, uh, and people like yourself, when they're actually giving value and they're giving their time, it might sound woo woo, you know what I mean? But like, you know, in the universe, like yeah. it is felt. They know, people know when you like just do something quickly and and you're like ah this is this is valuable be like yeah it's not really valuable but they know that when you're spending your time right and i'm i'm, I'm thinking about writing a book uh, next year you've read the five languages uh the five love languages is that um that so they talk I, i've I heard of it i don't know that i read it it's a good book by mm-hmm. the way so it talks about like the um the five love languages what is it acts of service quality time yeah, yeah. words of affirmation um, present touch and yeah. something else anyway but i was like couldn't that work in the business mm-hmm. world oh gift giving yeah gift giving was the fifth one so like you know i can give my wife a gift and she's like great that's whatever right you know what i mean yeah. she's not she's not getting it i'm i love getting gifts like right. when somebody gives me a gift i'm like I love it. You've spent time. You thought about me when, you know, when you were out and about and you were like, oh, this might be a good game. Right. I love that. Like yeah. to me that like. And that stresses me game. out. Yeah. <laughs> right. But, you know, but for my right. wife, she's like, it stresses her out. Yeah. She doesn't, that's not her love language. Exactly. So if I give her something, she's like, eh. But quality time for her is super important. So if I'm giving her things that I like and not talking, not giving her love, like la- her love things to her love, right. love language. Yeah. Then we're not communicating right and i was like why can't we do that with business right yeah, of course how can we create like these touch points mm-hmm. where it's giving right and the act of service of i've written it down you yeah. know what i mean like i've spent my time on this a book like two books right so that you can have the information i've spent my time here mm-hmm. you know like 
what a valuable piece, right? And yeah. I tell people that all the time if they want to like grow their business, just like you well, have it's, to give. It's, it's I agree, and it's you know like you're talking about love languages and does it match like the the thing I think with content marketing is and what where it takes a lot of time is you know I like to read. Some people love videos. Yeah. Some people like audio. Um, to kind of get all of those things, it you know I hate doing videos, but we do them. Um, because I think ha- getting that information out to people is so important. Correct. You know, like, and I personally and my wife hates this about me. Uh, I'm like a DIYer, right? I, I try to do it all myself, whether it's videos or audio or at the house, you know, hanging lights, fixing That's the awesome. plumbing. Uh, I, 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 I do I it all, too, right? Man. And so, but I know there's people like that. And like, that's why I want to put it out there because there's people who are going to struggle and they will never call an attorney, but that doesn't mean they shouldn't at least have the best information or some idea of what they're going to be facing. Um, and for me, that's one of the reasons I do, because I would probably, I would be the ultimate consumer of stuff like that. And they're going to be, there are going to be folks who like me, you know, like, uh, Hey, Mr. Plumber. Yeah. I've already pulled the toilet off and got the <laughs> rotor rooter all the way in, but now I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. Right. Um, so who are you going to call? Right. The, yeah. At least the guy who got you to that point is probably going to be one of your calls. A hundred percent. Yeah. I think that I think that that you're, you nailed it on the head. It's like when you've given enough what you're setting the precedent for is what it's like to work with you yeah. before you even spend a, a dollar. Be like, wow, they're, they've so they're so valuable at the beginning that this is what it's like. Well then, I know what it's going to be like when they when I actually spend money because yeah. they've spent so much time on this, right? They spent so much time on the giving aspect and not necessarily on the taking aspect. And, and you know, I think it's it is a, at least at the start you want it to be that way, a giving relationship. Sure. I think yeah, I I've, I've had an epiphany this past year because my strength was how am I giving value to people that are not my clients yet? Right. Mm-hmm. My prospects. And yeah. that was, I was nailing it because we were like signing people up. Yeah. What I, what I did not think about until this year was what am I doing for my clients? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And how are, how am I keeping them involved and how am I giving, continuing to give them value? That's right. Uh, my wife, she explained it so well. She's like, you know, it's, you're doing so much at the beginning, you're doing so much at the beginning. And then, you know, cause we are evaluating our processes in, in the office and she's like, we have all these processes to get people, uh, through the funnel signed up or g- get some information. We get them signed up. There's a lot of onboarding stuff. And then it just goes cold. Like, how does that feel? Like, how would it feel to you if you, you're going on three or four dates with someone and, everything's going great, then you think, man, I love this. And then you don't hear from them for a month. Yeah. You know, what do you think about that? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, we kind of had it's that epiphany truth. too, you know, like, Hey, we need to, we need to start building some of this stuff in throughout the customer, throughout journey, right? the whole process, yeah. throughout the whole journey. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's so what we brought it up for you guys. I just, um, you know, we would, we wouldn't talk to our clients until like we would go to their shoot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And we'd have such a good time on the shoot. Yeah. And then we we're like, man. And I met this group at a law conference at Pilma uh, called Hona. Okay. And they, yeah. What they do is they create customer journey. Right. Uh, are you familiar? Yeah. With oh, cool. So. <clears throat> yeah. They had just changed their name. It used yeah, to be something they used else. To be, um, um, and then they changed to Hona milestones. Yeah. Yes. So like, we, hey, your case is moving to this next stage. Correct. And it was like the Domino's Pizza track. Right. And yes. I was like, why aren't we doing that for us? And so we did it. So we shot a bunch of videos where we were like, <laughs> um, hey, we sent you your videos for approval. And mm-hmm. it's me dress up as Russell Crowe as a gladiator. <laughs> and I'm like, are you not entertained? <laughs> Approve your videos. You know? right. so, so we wanted to do it in a fun way. But yeah. like now we have these touch points where we're in <laughs> communication and look, we know everybody's busy. We're right. not hounding them, but we're but they are aware that we are present, right? And we and we showing them that hey, we're working in the background. Yeah, like there's things happening. We just like, like just um, to let you know. I, I try to describe to my team is look, clients will give us a lot of grace if we 
you know, if, if it's not going the right way, if things are taking longer, as long as there's no surprises along the way. Yeah. And you know how you remove surprises? Communication. It's just talking to them. Yeah. <laughs> Communicating with them. And, you know, as long as they, I feel, as long as, and, and my experience has been, as long as they kind of know that, they're fine. Yeah. They understand that things happen, things take longer, courts take longer. But if, you know, you don't talk to them for eight months, <laughs> and then you're like, oh, hey, yeah, that trial we told you about, uh, yeah, it got canceled, it got continued. That's when they get angry. Yeah, for sure. You know, that's where the frustration comes in. What do you like most about being an entrepreneur? I like most, what do I like most about being an entrepreneur is uh, being in control of my own destiny. Yeah. And, and having, having the ability to shift course if needed, to work with the people I want to work with, um, to set up the systems that I think are going to work best to, to serve those, but you know, those clients that we're, we're working for. Um, yeah, that's what gets me up every day is knowing that it's, it's on me, man. I'm not dependent on someone else. Um, it's on us to get it right. Yeah, for sure. What about you? Um, I love, if you had you asked me five years ago, it'd be different. Okay. You know, and then if you had, had you asked me 10 years ago, it'd be different. Of course. Right. So 10 yeah. years ago, I tell you it's because I couldn't work for anybody else. Mm -hmm. Right. I still can't. Yeah. Um, but that's not true because who I'm working for now is my employees. That's right. My clients. Yeah. Those are, those are the people that I answer to. Mm -hmm. Right. So as much as I think that I'm the boss, I'm not. Right. You know what I mean? Like, so now what, what I really am enjoying is the problem solving that I'm doing for my clients, right? Okay. Like they're actually seeing results mm -hmm. and because they're seeing results they're staying on, right? Like, yeah. so I have retainers. Right. And so when we do a good job mm -hmm. and like their videos are getting seen or, or, or they're seeing hitting some milestones within, the, right. you know, within the organization, like that makes me happy. Right. Yeah. Cause now I feel like I'm a partner with all of my clients. Yeah. Right. And that, that feels good because it's like, ah, it's like, it's like being, um, I'm a personal injury attorney, mm -hmm. right? I'm also a plastic surgeon. I'm also <laughs> yeah. this, you know what I mean? Cause right, like, right. And I get to know because we're shooting all of the content, I get to know about their world. Yeah. Right. Like besides actually knowing the law, I know how a personal injury firm works. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause like I, I, I'm in it. I've, I've heard all the questions answered. That's right. You know? Yeah. Um, so, but so it's fun when you can see that. And then you, when somebody comes in as a new client, you're like, yeah, this is what we've done. This is how we've been successful in the, in, in, in the past. Mm -hmm. Just follow this. Right. Gotcha. And so now we have a nice little, you know, roadmap and that's, what's really cool now being sort of established where we're like, okay, what we're doing works, not just in theory, especially with marketing companies. Right. They're all like, we can possibly get yeah. you. And it's like, <laughs> well, that's not good enough. Right. Yeah. Clicks don't really matter. Right. Yeah. It's at the bottom, at the end of the day, it's top uh, yeah. line revenue. And we need, we need signed contracts. Cases. <laughs> you know? That's it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. What's your uh, top five restaurants in New Orleans? Top five, man. Um, so I tell you when we, like my family loves the most and, I, I, what I say, I think it's like one of the best bites of food in the world is what created this restaurant and it's Drago's. Um, yeah. And we started going to Drago's when my kids were young and it was kind of like the biggest mistake we've ever made in our life because it became their favorite restaurant and now they want to go all the time. And, you know, it's, I wouldn't say it's, you know, like it's not the cheapest, the classic New Orleans great restaurant, but it's pretty good. And, yeah. you know. You get five or six dozen of those charbroiled oysters to start. Then, it's I mean, that's the <laughs> it's the bill at most other places, you know, and that's yeah. just a starter. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. So, I mean, I like that place. Uh, Drago's in Metairie. Or? Metairie. Yeah. I, okay. I like the original man. I mean, I've been there. Um, it just doesn't have the same feel, you know. Yeah. Um, heck, even the, the Drago's since it's expanded doesn't feel the same as the old one, you know. Yeah. Um, but. We like that one. I really like Mosca's. Um, Where's that? It's it's in Wagaman. It's on Highway 90. And it's a great story. Uh, it's, you know, old mafia hangout restaurant. It's old Italian. 
uh, family style service. But my grandmother used to work there. Uh, she was a waitress there her whole, you know, my whole life. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a good, it's kind of out of the way. And it was designed that way because <laughs> they could shut off the roads and nobody would bother them. Moscas. Uh, yeah. That's cool. Um, it's pretty famous, actually. Uh, she's taken pictures with plenty of famous folks through the years. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I'll have to check it out. But it's Oysters Mosca, so good. And this uh, is in uh, Highway 90? Close highway, to where? Highway 90, <laughs> close to the dump. <laughs> <laughs> really? But yeah. Like, so if you just, like, if you take the GNO West Bank Expressway and just stay on it, you go through West Wego. So you pass up like the shrimp lot and all, I don't know if you're familiar with that. Mm -hmm. You pass that up, you go um, through Avondale, and then right at the end of Avondale, there's a little white building on the left. And it's a restaurant, and it's, it's uh, usually packed. Uh, and you're like, how did this restaurant get out here? But when you kind of look into the history of it, it's it's pretty cool. That's cool. Um, you know, I don't really, other than that, I don't really have any other go-to restaurants that I that I go to and say like they're my favorite. I just I just love the food culture here. Yeah. And um, I don't really have places that I dislike. I'm I'm pretty agreeable. Uh, and so like I, I can find something I like just about anywhere. And I can have a good time at all of them, you know, and find find the beauty in it. Are you a guy that's like, all right, we're going to go out to dinner. I'm going to look at Google and then, you know. Well, I'm in, choose yeah, I'm in Luling. So we <laughs> in Luling, we have like five restaurants. <laughs> and so it's usually like, well, we just ate at this one <laughs> two days ago. So we'll go to the next one. But you uh, come into the city, though. Yeah, huh? we come to the city. Uh, but usually I like I just let others pick. Um, because I don't really have strong, I don't really have strong opinions on, yeah. cause I know I'm going to, I know I can find a good dish that I'm going to like and a good drink and have fun. And so usually when you're out with folks, there's always someone who's got a very That's discerning palate and you know, if it's not just right, you know, so there's I usually, that's right. So we let them pick and we have a good time wherever. It's cool. It's good to be agreeable. What do you have strong opinions on? <laughs> um, I don't know. College football. <laughs> Who's your team? LSU. LSU. Yeah. Did you go to LSU? You went to yeah, LSU. went to LSU undergrad. Right. On. My son's a freshman at LSU right now. That's cool. Yeah. So it's what's he studying? Finance. That's good. That's a good degree. I guess. I mean, it's just that that's I feel like that's something that you can just take anywhere. Yeah, I think, you know, it's one of those I think it's one of those degrees now, though, that I mean, you need to know the mathematics and the the the, the ratios and all of that stuff. But you also need to know computers and programming, because I think that's kind of where it's going with. Yeah. With A.I. And, you know, I think most of the big trading houses now are, you know, all algorithms and how close are you to the exchange to get your trade done quickly enough to, mm. so you got to know that too. Um, yeah. I think with finance, I mean, you can, you know, become a CFO. Yeah. Right. Like there's, you know, is that sort of the track or he's wanting to get into, you know, the stocks? He's still, he's still finding his way, you yeah. know, he, when he started, he was going to be a mechanical engineer. And I mean, he's, he's not even through the first semester, but he changed that after, like maybe just reading some more. And I was like, look, man, yeah. I'm, I, nobody forced me to do, you know, the path that I chose. I, I just want you to do a path. I don't even care if it's college. Like just be committed to it. Um, find your own way. You and go. I'm here for support one way or the other. Just, you know, I'm not bailing you out of jail. <laughs> You're going to have to at least spend the night. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I know, I, I know that, uh, I know that route. <laughs> <laughs> Back in my day. <laughs> hey, tell, uh, you can look into this camera and tell yeah. people where to find you. Yeah, you can find us at uh, ljblegal.com. That's the best way to get us, um, get on there. They'll have our phone numbers and email addresses and all that good stuff. But that's that's the easiest way. And that's, if I give you the phone number or name and an address, you're going to go look it up anyway online. There so you go. just go there. If y'all need help with uh, disability or personal injury, hit them up. 
good guy. Thank you for being on the show. Yep. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And that was Spaghetti on the Wall, ladies and gentlemen, brought to you by Laduke Entertainment <laughs> for all of your digital marketing needs, social media, podcasting. We got you. And you can watch Spaghetti on the Wall anywhere where there's a podcast. And we'll see you all next week. <laughs>